O Lord, our God, we gather together today to give you thanks and praise your greatness. O Lord, let our hearts be filled with your praise. Let us never forget the good things you do for us. We cannot comprehend the number of blessings you pour out on us from day to day. As we gather today around your name, we pray that you would fill our hearts, our minds, and our soul. Transform us, Lord, and make us more like you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brother Don, all over to you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rohan. Thank you, brother. So, good evening, brothers and sisters. And welcome to this uh, prayer meeting again today. Am I coming across? You can hear me, brother Paddy? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Okay, that, that's good. That's good. Thank you. So, uh, before I start, I want to say it was really nice to hear somebody say, somebody else say the opening prayer. And I think that is a good sign. We should welcome anyone who wants to take part in this meeting in, in, in any way. So if you want to say the opening prayer, or even if you want to give a talk, or if you want to uh, lead any of the sessions, please um, talk to Brother Parry. And I think we'll be more than happy to have you, any of the participants joining in and, uh, and giving us uh, your, a bit of your spirituality as well, because uh, spirituality is not, uh, anointing is not only upon one or two or select people, it's upon everyone in this group. And I should say in this family, because really we're more than a group, we are a one family. So, so, so that was, yes, absolutely. So thank you um, all my brothers and sisters, you are listening, it's, it's wonderful to have you back. And, uh, would I request that uh, because we're going to study a small passage from the Bible, that, that you will also have your Bibles open with you. So could I get you to get your Bibles and have it open with you? And um, there will be a few requests from me to ask you to read a verse or two. So could I request you right now to be prepared to read? So. That would be wonderful that I don't have to coax you to put up your hand. So please feel free to, to come forward and read because uh, as I said, we are all one family. We, you know, we might not have met physically, but we are one in spirit here. So, uh, Amen. so, so, yes. so let us start. So I could I ask you to open your Bibles to the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew chapter nine. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to you. Praise, Praise you, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Bless your anointing be upon each one of us as we listen to your word Hallelujah. and meditate on it, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless all those listening. And right now, we, we intercede for the intentions of all those who are listening right now, Lord. Mighty Spirit, I can see the Holy Spirit coming down on Brother Dawn. Hallelujah. And Mother Mary Yes, Yes, yes. We always ask, have to ask Mother Mary, our blessed, loving mother, to intercede for us. Yes. And she always does. That has been my experience with her. Amen. Oh, She's such a beautiful, loving mother that we cannot afford to miss her. So thank you, dear mother, for your presence as well here in this meeting and with every one of us. So, yeah, let us, uh, I, I assume you've got to Matthew chapter 9. And if you remember, uh, that's where we stopped off last week, wasn't it? So the start of uh, Matthew 9, where it says, Jesus stepped into a boat crossed over and came to his own town. And uh, I was reading what own town meant, did it mean Nazareth? But actually uh, a commentary said that it is referred to the town of Capernaum. So, so that's where Jesus came to Capernaum. And then there, that's where uh, we studied last week about that paralyzed man who was let through the roof uh, by his friends and, and Jesus uh, forgiving his sins. 
And it's interesting to see the reaction of the Pharisees and the critics of Jesus to them. But it is also interesting to see in verse 8, so that's uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 8, and they said, and when the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe and they praised God. So that was finally, you know, the, that was the final reaction, despite all the disbelief and the skepticism from the Pharisees that finally people looked at Jesus's miracle and they said, they realized it not only, the, Jesus not only heals physically, but he heals spiritually as well. And that, my dear brothers and sisters, is what we are all after, not just the physical healing. You know, we, we might be even saved from death, but eventually death, a physical death will come. But we are after spiritual healing so that uh, spiritual death will never come to us. So we will be always sharing eternal life with Jesus. And that's why spiritual healing is so much important for each and every one of us. So today I want to, to go to the next section of chapter 9, which is from verses, I'll be covering from verses 9 to 13, a very short passage that I'll be covering today. And hopefully it won't be too long. We won't spend too much time, but we will try to get some insights from this passage. And also I would welcome you if you have any insights apart from the ones that I bring up to so please, uh, you know, unmute your mic and, and let us have your wisdom because it is not your personal wisdom. It is the Holy Spirit re revealing his wisdom through you. Amen. So, amen. so can I get someone to, uh, to read verse nine, just verse nine. As can Jesus I was walking here? along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax tax booth, as he said to him, "Follow me," and he got up and followed him. Okay, okay. So, so this we are reading about the calling of Matthew. So, as Jesus went on from there, so that was from the miracle at Capernaum. He saw a man named Matthew. A man named Matthew. Now, if if you go into the Gospel of Mark in chapter 2, verse 14, he says that this man was also named Levi, L-E-V-I, Levi, the son of Alphaeus. So, so that is Matthew and Levi, one and the same person, you must know. And this is the gospel of Matthew. So Matthew, in fact, is writing about himself here in this. So as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew. Question, what did Jesus see in Matthew that others didn't see? What did Jesus see in Matthew that others didn't see? So let, let's, uh, let's take us back to the Old Testament and a little story in the first book of Samuel. If you remember that Samuel was asked by God to go and anoint a new king for Israel. So when the prophet Samuel came with his horn of oil to anoint, he went to the house of Jesse and he asked for Jesse's sons. And one by one, he went through all the seven sons, but God told him that none of these were suitable to be the king of Israel. And finally, God led Samuel to choose David, who was out, the smallest and the youngest of them, who was out tending the flocks of sheep. And he, he came back in and God told, uh, told Samuel that, yes, Jesse, uh, David is the one who will be the king. And we have that famous verse in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 17, which says that man looks at outward appearances, but God looks at the heart. Very, very, very important. Man looks at outward appearances, but God looks at the heart. And that's the reason why 
David was chosen, even though he was much punier, smaller built, and not as, uh, you know, that didn't have the appearance of a king that would have suited the other brothers. But David was chosen over all of them because God looks at the heart. Likewise, Matthew's heart he must have yearned for God. But because of his position that he was in, we are told that Matthew was a tax collector. And we know that tax collectors were much despised people there. Why? Because they collected taxes from the Jewish people on behalf of their Roman emperor. So, so they were like traitors because they were collecting taxes from their own people for the benefit of the Romans. And secondly, they were not only traitors, but they, they generally took more money than what they should have taken as taxes. So they were not only just traitors, they were extortionists. So that's why they were much hated people. But you see, Matthew, in his heart, he must have yearned for Jesus. But there's no way he could make a public appearance in a synagogue and, and, and show that his love for God's word and for Jesus, uh, and for, sorry, for God, and for Jesus too, because, because of his position. So when Jesus saw Matthew sitting at the tax office, no doubt counting his, his day's profit, Jesus spoke only two words. What were those two words? Follow me, we are told. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. How easy is it, dear brothers and sisters, for us to hear the call of Jesus and just drop everything that we have and follow Jesus? It's not easy, isn't it? We are told of several examples in the Bible. Um, I'm just trying to remember now, but um, I think Bartimaeus, the the blind beggar. You remember him? All he had was a, a lovely cloak to cover himself with. And he threw off his cloak, sprang to his feet when, when Jesus called him. So all that he had, he, he threw it. And, and because he, he knew that Jesus had much more to offer him. Similarly, Abraham, uh, uh, who was known as Abram then uh, in chapter 12 of Genesis, if you go back to Genesis chapter 12, and you see that God commanded Abram, who, was, who later was in chapter 17, you, you hear that he, he become Abraham. So God commanded him to leave the place that, you know, where he had set up all his, he was really well to do and uh, he was well established in the place where he was set up. God asked him to move from there. And, and go far away to Canaan. Uh, so, so there are people in the Bible who have responded, left everything that they had just with a simple command from God because it really moved them. So we should, should open our hearts right now to Jesus who is telling us not necessarily asking us to desert the home or you know the, the country or the city where we are living. He's not asking us something as radical as that, even though he has asked others to do that. There are missionaries in the world who do that today. They leave all they have, their familiar home and territory and all the, um, the pleasures that they have and, and they go to far off countries and, and to serve Jesus. But in our own little way, wherever we are today, God is telling us, Jesus is telling us, follow me. Let us listen to those words of Jesus right now in our hearts. Lord Jesus, we hear you calling us, follow me. Lord, help us not to be distracted by all the temptations 
and the materialism and the pleasures of the secular world that we see around us and that distract us so much, Lord. But help us to follow you. Help us to listen to your voice, not the voice of any others, because you are our good shepherd, Lord. So, okay. John Chrysostom, he was a, a, a great fifth century church father, and he describes Matthew's calling. So I just want to read to you uh, from what I, I have here. Why did Jesus not call Matthew at the same time as he called Peter and John and the rest? Why? He came to each one at a particular time when he knew that they would respond to him. He came at a different time to call Matthew when he was assured that Matthew would surrender to his call. Similarly, he called Paul at a different time when Paul was vulnerable after the resurrection, something like a hunter going after his prey. For God is acquainted with our inmost hearts and knows the secrets of our minds, knows when each one of us is ready to respond fully. So he knew Matthew had been softened for full responsiveness and he called Matthew then. Brothers and sisters, if, you know, if we have been praying for someone in our family, do not give up hope. Continue praying. Someone close to you, it could be a friend or someone in your family, you're praying for their conversion or that they should change in their ways. Do not give up hope because there will be a time when they will be softened to respond to the call of Jesus, follow me. All we have to do is to continue praying for them. So what is Jesus' call on your life? Jesus chose Matthew to be his follower and friend, not because, just, just realize that, we're not told much about you know, what Matthew was, but we're not told that he was a religious person, very religious, or learned, or popular, or saintly. None of these we are told. All we are told, in fact, that he was a tax collector, leaving us to imagine that he led a life of wealth and ease. So imagine someone who is in that position, leading, leading a comfortable lifestyle of wealth and ease, just dropping everything and following Jesus. What a wonderful change of heart. What a wonderful conversion. Could I get someone else now to read verses 10 and 11? So could I, I get, I'm just going to call out names. Sorry if I, I don't know. Uh, Idlima's iPhone. So whoever that is, do you want to unmute your mic and, and read verses 10 and 11? Okay. Uh, didn't seem to hear me. What about Elizabeth? Do you want to uh, unmute your mic and-, and oh, Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry, uh, who's that? Okay. Uh, this is Ol Olga. Oh, no, Olga, I'm sorry, Olga. The table. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. So right. can you please now, read while... verses 10 and 11 for us, Olga? Thank you. Now, now, while he was at table in the house, it happened that a number of tax collectors and sinners came to sit at the table with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your master eat with the collectors and masters, tax collectors and, masters and sinners? Thank you. When he heard... Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Completed? Right. When yeah. he heard this, he replied. Oh, no, no, no. That's fine. That's, that's up to verse 11. So, yeah, Thank 10 to 11. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Sister Olga. Thank you. So we read here, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house. So things have progressed, haven't they? So it's gone from Matthew responding to Jesus' call to now Matthew inviting Jesus over to his house. 
to have dinner or have a meal. So in the tradition of that time, inviting someone to share a meal at home was a special mark of respect and honor to that person. You just didn't invite anybody. It's someone who you thought was very close to you uh, or someone whom you respected that you would invite to a meal, to share a meal in your house. And, and Jesus was gracious despite his very busy life. We, we read, um, I remember in the beginning of Mark, uh, the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, how Jesus prayed uh, early morning and, and nighttime. And then he, during the day, he would go out to perform his ministry in the signs and wonders. But Jesus was a very busy person because so many people sought him. But despite that, he found time to share his love and bring the kingdom of God to those most in need of it. And we see in, in the gospels, many examples of Jesus doing this, transforming lives at the meals that he attended. So uh, some of you might be able to give me examples of this, but the ones that I can think about is uh, in Luke chapter seven, verses 36 to 49, where Jesus was at the house of Simon the Pharisee and the lady who was a sinner came and fell at Jesus' feet and wiped and started crying, wept bitterly because of her sinful life. And you remember how she wiped Jesus' legs with the tear, with her hair because her, her tears had fallen on, on, on Jesus' feet and she wiped his, his legs with her hair. And then she, I think she had a jar of alabaster which she rubbed over his, his feet as well. So, that that was um, so that was Jesus sharing a meal at the house of Simon the Pharisee. Then, of course, we have the feeding of the five thousand in Matthew fourteen, and the feeding of the four thousand in Matthew fifteen. So that there again, Jesus feeding people, and we remember also um, Zacchaeus in Luke chapter nineteen. We remember Zacchaeus. Um, you may remember the incident that he climbed atop a tree because. He was a very short man and he climbed atop the tree to see Jesus and Jesus called him down and, and Jesus um, you know, went to his house. We're not told about the meal, but of course, if he's invited into Zacchaeus' house, he would have had a meal with Zacchaeus. And, and of course, you, you learn there about the transformation that came about with Zacchaeus as well. And of course, another important, most important meal that Jesus had was the Last Supper, you can read about it in Luke 22, one of the accounts, of course, of the Last Supper, where Jesus gave us his own precious body and blood. So, so some wonderful things that Jesus did at mealtimes. So, so it's very important. So you, you might just read it casually saying, oh, Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house. But recall the things that Jesus did in his ministry while having a meal with people. So we go to the, many, to the very next part that says, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him. Many tax collectors and sinners came down and ate with him. So Jesus aims at a mission of conversion of the tax collectors and sinners. And his first step was to call Matthew to discipleship. But his second was the gathering together through Matthew of a large number of these tax collectors and sinners. So why sinners? Sinners may include common folk who did not share all the scruples of the Pharisees. You remember that the Pharisees were very religious people. They were absolutely religious. They knew the law inside out and they knew every bit of it and all the little rituals that had to accompany those laws that they made. So they would refer to the common person as, as sinners because you know they were not of the same class as the Pharisees. So Jesus, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. Now, I'd like you to open your book of Psalms and go to the very first Psalm. So 
So for, for we'll just for a moment uh, put a marker on this page and let's have a look at Psalm 1. And can I get Sister Shanti? You there? Do you want to unmute Sister Shanti and, and read us? Yes, brother. Uh, yep, read us just the uh, first two verses of Psalm 1. Uh, yeah. Instead, they find joy in obeying the law of the Lord. And they study it day and night. Yeah, just the first, uh, go from first verse one, verse one and verse two, sorry. Yeah, well, verse one and two, yeah. What's some, uh, yeah, some, some uh, yes. That too, that is, uh, instead they find joy in obeying the law of the Lord and they study it day and night. Yeah, that's verse two. So verse one. Uh, happy or those. Yeah. Who yeah. reject the advice of evil men, who do not follow the example of sinners, or join those who have no use for God. Uh huh. Or join those who have no use for God. Yes, for God. So happy are those. Uh, my my version says, "Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers." And you have those who have no use for God. So okay. if that is what is written there, then what was Jesus doing in the company of tax collectors and sinners? So do you say that there is some tension between what is written here and what Jesus did? It may appear to be so, doesn't it? Because someone says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take. Mm -hmm or sit in the company of mockers. So mm -hmm. as I pointed out, there is actually no contradiction because for one, Psalm 1, when it talks about sinners, it's talking about people who are habitual sinners or people who are literally turned their backs to God. So it's talking about sit in the company of mockers and sinners, the wicked. It's talking about people who have no, who do not want to have any relationship with God, have turned their backs completely and are in fact in the kingdom of Satan. So it says, you know, do not, it's saying to avoid such people. But we see Jesus here in the company of tax collectors and sinners, sinners being the common men, as I explained to you, who did not share all, you know, the, the spiritual knowledge of the Pharisees, but tax collectors. So, but let us go on to understand why Jesus was there with the tax collectors and sinners. So what was Jesus's answer? Let's read verse 12 and 13. So can we go back to chapter nine, Matthew chapter nine, verse 12 and 13? And could I have someone else put up their hands to read? Sure, okay. I'll read brother. John, so chapter verse 12 and 13. Yeah. Verse 11 and 13. No, no, 12 and 13. 12 and 13, yes, sure. On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Excellent answer. What an answer. So when the Pharisees, you know, they challenged Jesus's unorthodox mm -hmm. behavior in eating with sinners and tax collectors, Jesus's defense was quite simple. He said a doctor doesn't need to visit healthy people. Instead, he goes to the sick. Jesus, likewise, he sought out those who are sick spiritually, who are greatest in need. So a true physician seeks healing of the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. And Jesus came as the divine physician and good shepherd 
to care for his people and to restore them to wholeness of life. So, so Jesus' answer was, yes, it's only the sick who needs the doctor. And, and that shows us why he was in the company of tax collectors and sinners. What Psalm 1 is doing is Psalm 1 is telling us, do not be in the company of people who are wicked and do not make them your first priority in, in terms of your friends. So yes, if you are there, it might be, there might be a reason for you to be in the company of, of tax collectors and sinners. If for instance, you're there to change them, but be careful, be on your guard that you are not influenced by them. So the only reason that you might want to be in the company of, of sinners or, or people whom you know uh, are hardened, have hardened hearts is if you are trying to change them, but do not get influenced by their ways. And that's, that's what Psalm 1 is saying, basically telling you, be careful of the company you keep because the company you keep is going to influence you the way you think and the way you speak and, the, and what you say and, and what you profess and what you believe. So that's what Psalm 1 is telling you. But I, I remember, in fact, an account listening to, um, you know, on the internet, you get so many uh, uh, testimonies. And I was listening to a pastor talking about this testimony where he was passing by a nightclub uh, and he, the Holy Spirit told him to go in there to go into this nightclub and he said, oh God, how can I do that? You know, I'm a pastor. And you know, uh, what would people say about me seeing because they know that I'm a pastor and that would ruin my reputation if I were to go into this nightclub. The Holy Spirit said, no, I want you to go there and, and just tell this girl that just say to her that God loves you. And you know, despite whatever he felt to the contrary, he walked into this nightclub, so where we had the you know the proverbial tax collectors and sinners there, and and there was this girl dancing on the stage, and then you know he went up to her at some point and he told her, you know I was I have a message for you, I came to tell you that God loves you, and and that changed her completely, and and she was converted. So, so yes, there are occasions, uh, brothers and sisters, when we have to, to, to deal with tax collectors and sinners, but it is only with the motive of changing their hearts, of allowing the Holy Spirit to change them. We cannot change them. We can, we can only tell them things, but it is the job of the Holy Spirit, finally, to change people's hearts. Now, we, we just read verses 12 and 13. So the Orthodox was so preoccupied, the Orthodox talking about the Pharisees, they were so preoccupied with their own practice of religion that they neglected to help the very people who needed spiritual care. And see, that's how Jesus was so different from them. They might have been religious, but their care of people, the spiritual care of people was very much lacking. Could I uh, get you to, to understand that? Um, I might get you to have a look at uh, the book of Ezekiel. So if you go, go to the book of Ezekiel, which is after Isaiah, you have Jeremiah, Lamentations and Ezekiel. And if you go to Ezekiel chapter 34, could I get you to go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 34? Yeah. Okay. Elizabeth, Elizabeth yeah. do you want to read uh, chapter 34? The, just the, the first six verses, please. Okay. Um, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, prof prophecy against the 
prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, that says the Lord God, bow to the shepherds of Israel who fed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the sheep? Okay, just, just I might interrupt you, Elizabeth, uh, just a moment. So the word of the Lord came to prophet Ezekiel and Ezekiel was told by God to prophesy against the shepherds of Israel at that time, saying, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to you, shepherds of Israel. You take care only of yourselves. So, you know, your spiritual care for your people, your flock is lacking. Yeah, please continue, sister. Uh -huh. yeah. You eat the fat. You clothe yourself with the wool. You kill the fatlings, but you don't you don't feel feed the sheep. Yes. The, the disease and weak you have no strength in it. The sick you have not healed. The hurt and crippled you have not bandaged. Those gone astray you have not brought back. The loss you have no soul to find. But with force and hard-hearted harshness, you have ruled them. And they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they be became food for all the wild beasts of the field. My yes. sheep, continue. Yeah, last of us, yeah. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yes, my sheep were scattered upon all the face of the earth and no one searched or sought for them. Thank, thank you, sister. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so here you see that the religion of the Pharisees and the religious the, the people was so selfish because they didn't want to have anything to do with the people, not like themselves. So you can see quite clearly how the sheep he's talking about here was God's people. You know, they, they were not cared for by their spiritual leaders. And my sheep wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. And they were scattered over and they became food for all the wild animals. So all, all, all Satan's uh, devices, all, all the people who went against them, they, they, they fell prey to them because they were not spiritually nourished by those who cared, who was meant to care for them. They were scattered over the whole earth and no one searched or looked for them. And that's why God sent the good shepherd, didn't he? So because we had people like these who caring for them. And Jesus himself said, I came to not to call the righteous, but to call sinners. So ironically, you know, the, the Pharisees were as needy as those that they despised. Because we know in Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So every one of us is a sinner. So would you describe yourself, having read this, would you describe yourself as one who is well? or one who is sick. Because reading verses 12 and 13, Jesus says, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but those who are ill. Would you describe yourself among the righteous or among the sinners? I think we need to think very carefully before we answer this question. Because if we say that we are well and or we are righteous, then I think it is our pride that is getting to us. But humility will reveal the truth that really we are among the sick and the sinners. Jesus' response is very important for us to hear. By stating that he came not for those who were well and righteous, but for those who are sick and sinners, 
it tells us two important things. First, it tells us that all of us are spiritually sick and sinful. Every one of us. And as I just said in Romans 3.23, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it tells us that if we cannot humbly admit to being sick and sinners, and in our pride we claim that we are well and we are righteous, then we essentially reject Jesus, the divine physician from our lives. We are essentially, essentially saying, Lord, I do not need you. If we think that we are well and righteous. It's also helpful to notice from what we just read that Jesus was not embarrassed in the company of the tax collectors and sinners. He did not hesitate at all. And in fact, clearly stated that they were the ones whom he came for. For, their, for that reason, we should not be afraid or embarrassed to admit that we are sinners or we are spiritually ill and need our Lord. Do we need our Lord? Do we need interior cleansing, healing, and forgiveness every day? If it's difficult for us to wholeheartedly say yes to that question, then perhaps we struggle with the pride of the Pharisees more than we know. No matter how holy you become, no matter how deeply you pray, how many prayer meetings you go to, church services you go to, how charitable you are, you will always need healing and forgiveness of the divine physician each and every day. Let us reflect now upon the need that we have in our life today for forgiveness. Right now. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts as we listen to you. If we have wronged someone, Holy Spirit, and we have been trying to avoid dealing with the issue, speak to our hearts right now, O Holy Spirit. Lord, cleanse us. Cleanse us, Lord Jesus, as we acknowledge our sin and are deeply repentant for it. Holy Spirit, reconcile us to God, our Heavenly Father. Help us to forgive easily. What sin do you struggle with the most? Interestingly, the holier one becomes, the more clearly they see their daily sins and the need for forgiveness and healing. If you struggle with this at all, spend some time examining your conscience. That, that's a great habit. I admit myself, I don't do it every day. But I have read from so, so many uh, practitioners and it's a wonderful thing to do at least before you go to sleep every night if you can. Uh, just do an examination of your conscience and how did you carry out your, your conduct yourself during the day as a Christian, as a friend of Jesus, as somebody who has been trying to live in his presence. Look for ways to do it more thoroughly and honesty, honestly. If you do, you can be certain that our Lord, who is the divine healer, will deeply desire to dine with you today and always. And lastly, I just want to go to that part that Jesus referred to. He says, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. So that verse is taken from the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 6. Hosea 6, 6. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. So in, in Hosea's day, prophet Hosea, God's people were very good at bringing sacrifice, but they had given up showing mercy. And they abandoned mercy altogether because they gave up the knowledge of God and truth. 
you'll learn about that or read about that in Hosea chapter four, in the beginning of chapter four. So they had, you know, abandoned truth and knowledge of God. And that's why they had abandoned merciful, uh, mercy completely. And, and Jesus reminds them, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. So God would rather have right hearts full of truth and mercy than sacrifice. So let's finish with a, a short prayer. Trying to give our hearts and minds completely to Jesus. And I would invite you to close your eyes and repeat these words in your to yourself as I say them aloud. My forgiving Lord, you are the divine physician who has come to forgive and heal all my ills and the ills of those for whom I pray. Remove my pride and self-righteousness so that I can be filled with humility and see clearly the sin in my life. As I see my sin, help me to turn to you and to trust in your abundant mercy, the ocean of mercy. You came for sinners, dear Lord, and I am one of those sinners in need of you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Uh, I hope that we will continue to live the words of the gospel and that mm -hmm. they will continue to help us to become more like our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Don. What an anointed session, so deep and powerful. As you said, I was imagining a Matthew in myself and how you personally went through how God looks at the heart that actually touched all of us, and myself, not the appearance of the king, not the skills the brothers of David had, but God led Samuel because he looks at the heart to choose David. And one thing that really strikes me in this and comes to life is Matthew, when he hears Jesus with a command, there's a command, there's an invitation, but also with the authority, follow me. I place myself in that same spot and say, would I leave as Matthew left? Would I throw the cloak as Bartimaeus threw off? Had nothing to do with his past or whatever his cloak represents uh, in his life and in my life. And do, am I really worthy of doing this every day? Thank you. Thank you, Brother Don. That's so powerful. Anyone else who would like to also uh, share what stood for you, please feel free to participate as Brother Don mentioned early on. Uh, the anointing is for all. Jesus is for all. And you are all. There is no nothing wrong. We are just as one, one heavenly family, God's family. And... Uh, Yes, yes, brother. We want to learn from each other. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely.
I was struck by the last sentence from Hosea, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Very often we are tempted to do a lot of sacrifices for God and we think we're doing it. Whereas we should be concentrating more on being merciful to everybody. And like that to mass pastor, be merciful to all those people who are not likely to be, mercy, be, be treated with mercy by others. We've got to seek them out and look after them and be merciful and show them God's wonderful mercy. So powerful, Sister Olga. Amen. That was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, yes, yes. We, we have the same thought as we as we got through, as Brother Don said, Hosea 6, that uh, Sister Olga just mentioned. And again, that is the sort of... Um, action that we all need to take from this particular word of God because God wants us to take actions if the if the truth reveals anything and as sister Olga just mentioned we are called to be merciful especially the test is and it is difficult when and in these times to really be merciful to be kind to show the Beatitudes of Jesus. Amen. Thank, thank you, Sister Olga. Um, anyone else feel free. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer. We are all journeying. So please, please. Uh, this is uh, the Holy Spirit talking through you. This is worship, fellowship, discipleship. You're all opening our hearts here before the Lord. So um. Yes, I can say something. Yes, please, Sister Elizabeth. Yes. I um when uh, in the um in Matthew nine um Lord said, "Follow me," isn't it? Yes. yes. Follow me. Ah, uh, that one is stuck in my heart, and I think I think. Um, most of the people who are in this group, they are more from, from overseas. And uh, somehow, somehow he just called each, each one of us. Amen. And we are here, we are here in this beautiful land, the land of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because, yes. because we have mission. We Amen. just we just said the first yes to come here far away, far away. I'm from South, South America and it's far, far away. And the same to all of, most of you. Yes. Because, yes, sister. And then, and then I, I think, I think we, we did the first step. We are just like babies, you know, Amen. we are, we are learning and, um, and uh, especially in this group, we learn a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Perry, because, and, and Brother Don, yes. Don, uh, that we need that one. We need to, to search the word of love uh, of God, the Bible, yes. every Amen. time. We need to do Amen. it more frequently. Yeah, and, and, and it's good what we are doing. And, and yes. yes, 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 we need to be open to God and open to the Holy Spirit to receive anything by any chance in any circumstances that we are at work or just walking or, or, or on yes. the street or, or in the bus, yes. just to talk, to say, Holy Spirit, what I need to say to this person who is maybe sitting beside you uh, or someone. And then, and then maybe it's just to say hello, but that hello maybe it means yes. a lot of the other person. Yes, oh, yes, yes. That's connecting Matthew, Sister Elizabeth. You're so that's so uh, right. Connecting Matthew, I imagine uh, Jesus not only, as Brother Don said, not only just inviting Matthew to inviting to follow Jesus means inviting to be part of his life because his spending time together is the part of life. Mm. Time is life. Yeah. was our life and not only then he invites to be a part of his life he wants 
he shows all of us to be and others too so just saying that hello to others in the bus or at workplace or in the street um that is jesus sitting with matthew and in his home sharing the meal but the purpose and the presence is to reach out to all mm. those who are outcast sinners or considered outcasts mm. your idea mm-hmm. amen yes praise the lord praise him wonderful anyone else that was very nice i'm really pleased uh, can someone else give us some wisdom from the holy spirit anyone feel free this we are always encouraging here so there is no going to be discouragement <laughs> brother what really struck me was that the lord looks at the heart amen yes just like um, we have the example of david as well how why yeah. david was chosen over all his brothers and also people would look at matthew like oh he's an outcast he's a tax collector mm. he shouldn't be sitting he should be associating with the lord and then he not just calls him and says okay follow me but also goes and fellowships with him goes to his house has dinner with him and also Amen. then matthew has that opportunity to involve other tax collectors and other sinners and other people who probably you know who would think no chance we don't even have a chance we don't stand a chance to you know stand beside rabbi and you know get some wisdom from him so yeah. that was an opportunity and uh, yes, it was I, open I, for everyone i i would say also uh, sister that you know after being converted after you know responding to jesus is follow me and he has now become a changed person to go back and call the old friends old friends and risk risk being mm-hmm. ridiculed by his old friends yes because remember he has left their company really yes. mm. and he's gone over to jesus now but he is re- risked being ridiculed by them and yeah. invited them over to his house where jesus was so yeah. that's a step that we also need to be you know mindful of because sometimes we uh, we are so self conscious or um, scared about talking to somebody else yes because we might think oh what will they think of if you know we start talking to them about jesus yes but here's matthew showing us a, a very good example yeah yes amen brother amen brother that's a very good point because uh, with jesus there is always a risk yeah that's crisis. right the risk we have yeah. To, yeah and how powerful it was jesus just said follow me that mm-hmm. actually spoke to his heart yeah. and his well established comfort zone he was in the comfort boat mm. and just as peter actually also stepped outside of the boat in the storm yeah as you said there are risks here of that decision yeah when he makes that decision to go back he'll be ridiculed yes harassed yeah and uh, all that is waiting in the secular world but jesus promises absolute peace and uh, tra- yeah always yeah and but again as we say when uh, jesus i trust in you in the divine mercy prayer as well Amen. this is the meaning actually matthew is giving the meaning by leaving it out yes amen amen yeah uh, okay if if everyone has if if that's that's all then uh, we will start our divine mercy is there a hand up there i think uh, elizabeth had has put a hand up is that uh... i think ah, elizabeth... no, that, that's why that's who asked for before people oh, okay okay okay, okay we'll <laughs> thank out. you praise god okay so let's start with our divine mercy yeah okay and with this divine mercy let us all come together because this is uh, after the word of god we are going to know jesus better yes and that's why it is absolutely important we read joshua 18 in every meeting we need to remember to you know go through the word of the lord yes. because <clears throat> that is not like any other book the holy spirit is the author and it is living word it is operative 
it is has the power to change and transform permanent lives. We have just seen that now. Yes. And we personalize this. Now, this is where the mercy is coming. And this is for the whole world. So as we are praying each and every decade, <clears throat> there is infinite merit in Jesus' passion and suffering. And I want everyone to believe that just for Jesus, it's like this. Yes. It's just this to, you know, change any person that you're praying for or financial problems or debt, anything or cancer, um, you know, blood pressure problems, heart problems, whatever. This is the moment we are going to hold on to because we talk to our father and the blood of Jesus allows us that merit. Amen. So let us uh, all together. Start in the name of the Father, in the name the of Father, the Father and of the Son and of the, Son, and and of of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. You expired, Lord Life, Jesus. Jesus, but the source the of our life, life gushed forth for the souls, the souls and the and ocean, the ocean, of, ocean mercy. of mercy. The ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, of life unfathomable, unfathomable divine my mercy. Envelop the, the whole world and empty yourself, yourself out upon us. O blood and water, and blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of, the font of, of mercy for us. I trust in you. you. Trust in you. O blood and water, blood and water which gushed forth from the heart, the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us. I trust, I trust in you. O blood and water, blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font, as a font of, of mercy for us, us. I, I trust in you. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will, thy will be done on earth as, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our trespasses. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, bring us to the test, but deliver us from all evil. us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, Hail Mary full, of full of grace. The Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Among women is the fruit of the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray for us to trust in us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven, of heaven and earth, and in Jesus believe Christ, in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. Was conceived, was conceived by the, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, born of the Virgin Mary suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended and went down to the dead on the third day, he rose again from the dead, ascended yes, to heaven, to heaven and is seated at the, the right hand of God the Father of Almighty. From there, come then he will come to judge the living and the dead. And the dead. I, believe I believe in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, forgiveness of sins, of sins the, resurrection, the resurrection of the, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Okay, as we begin our divine mercy today, I'm reading from the book of Saint Sister Faustina. It's called Divine Mercy in My Soul. There are beautiful messages and experiences from the life of Saint Sister Faustina, which are recorded in this book. Very powerful if we reflect on it. So I just uh, picked a few passages from this. So the first one for first reflection, we're reading from Notebook One, um, and it's... Um, Number 30. So on one occasion, I was reflecting on the Holy Trinity, on the essence of God. 
I absolutely wanted to know and fathom who God is. In an instant, my spirit was caught up with see what seemed to be the next world. I saw an inaccessible light. And in this light, what appeared like three sources of light, which I could not understand. And out of that light came words in the form of lightning, which encircled heaven and earth. Not understanding anything, I was very sad. Suddenly, from this sea of inaccessible light came our dearly beloved Savior, unutterably beautiful with his shining bones. And from this light came a voice which said, who God is in his essence, no one will fathom, neither the mind of angels nor of men. Jesus said to me, get to know God by contemplating his attributes. A moment later, he traced the sign of cross with his and vanished. Altogether, eternal, eternal Father, Father, eternal I, Father offer I offer you the body and blood, the soul, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved, beloved Son, Son our, Lord our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those, and those of the whole, whole world. world. And those of the whole world. Please feel free to lead anyone. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy, mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For our second decade, I'm reading from Notebook 2, uh, paragraph 692 and section 132. Oh, Jesus, I understand that your mercy is beyond all imagining. And therefore, I ask you to make my heart so big that there will be room in it for, for the needs of the, living, the souls living on the face of the earth. My, oh, Jesus, my love extends beyond the world to the souls suffering in purgatory. I want to exercise mercy towards them by means of indulgence prayers. God's mercy is unfathomable and inexhaustible, just as God himself is unfathomable. Even if I were to use the strongest words there are 
to express this mercy of God, all this would be nothing in comparison with what it is in reality. Oh, Jesus, make my heart sensitive to all the sufferings of my neighbor, whether of body or of soul. Oh, my Jesus, I know that you act towards us as we act towards our neighbor. My Jesus, make my heart like unto your merciful heart. Jesus, help me go through life doing good to everyone. All together. Eternal, Eternal Father. Father. Eternal Father. I offer you the body and blood. And blood the soul and, soul and divinity. Of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement, in atonement for our sins and, and those, of those of the whole world. Please, would anyone like to lead? For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have, and have mercy, mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus, sorrowful Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus, sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus, sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy, have mercy on us, mercy on us, on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have, have mercy, mercy, mercy on us and on the whole world. whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. And on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. world. Okay. Now I'm reading from the notebook three. And um, it's paragraph 1107. So Sister Faustina is recording in her book. Today during meditation, God gave me inner light and the understanding as to what sanctity is and of what it consists. Although I have heard these things many times in conferences, the soul understands them in a different way when it comes to know of them through the light of God, which illumines it. So she said, goes on to say, neither graces, nor revelations, nor raptures, nor gifts granted to a soul make it perfect, but rather the intimate union of the soul with God. These gifts are merely ornaments of the soul, but constitute nothing, neither its essence nor its perfection. My sanctity and perfection consist in the close union of my will with the will of God. God neither violates our free will, it is up to us whether we want to receive God's grace or not. It is up to us whether we will cooperate with it or waste it. Altogether. Eternal, Eternal Father, Father, I offer you, offer you the, body the body and blood, the soul and divinity, 
of, of your dear beloved, beloved son, our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement, in atonement for our sins, for our sins and, those and, those the, and those of the whole world. world. Would anyone like to lead, please? For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have Abba mercy, Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Okay, for our fourth decade, the carrying of the cross. I'm reading from the book of Sister Faustina, notebook 6, 1783 paragraph. So it says, when I immersed myself in prayer and united myself with all the masses that were being celebrated all over the world at that time, I implored God for the sake of all these holy masses to have mercy on the, on the world and especially on poor sinners who were dying at that moment. The reason why I chose this is we do exactly the same thing when we are doing the rosary. After every decade, we say the Gertrude's prayer, which is again, same, talking the same thing, exactly. And she goes on to say, at the, at the same instant, I received an interior answer from God that a thousand souls had received grace through the powerful med meditation I had offered to God. We do not know the number of souls that is ours to save through our prayers and sacrifices. Therefore, let us always pray for the sinners. It's so important throughout the world, we see so many people suddenly dying. And the reason why we should say the Gertrude's prayer as often as we possibly can is that these souls benefit from our prayers and from our intercessions altogether. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood the soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Please feel free to lead anyone. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, Abba Father, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion, Abba Father, Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Father, Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Our Father, Father, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Our Father, Father, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Our Father, Father, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, Father, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, have mercy on us and the whole world. Okay, for the fifth decade, I'm reading from Notebook 1, paragraph 103. Suddenly, I saw the Lord interiorly, and he said to me, Fear not, my daughter, I am with you. In that single moment, all the darkness and torments vanished my senses. My senses were inundated with unspeakable joy and the faculties of my soul filled with light. This is the same calling for you and I. The Lord is saying, when I'm calling you to follow me, fear not, my daughter, my son, I am with you. Also in another message, in the same notebook, notebook 107, Sister Faustina records, Oh my God, I have come to know that I am not of this earth. You, O oh Lord, have poured this profound awareness into my soul. My communion is more with heaven than with earth, though I in no way neglect my duties. This is so fitting to what we are, you know, the theme of today, what Brother Don has chosen. This is so fitting because we have our own duties in this world. We have our families. We have our duties. But at the same time, this profound understanding and this profound awareness of God revealed through Sister Faustina that our communion is more with heaven than with earth. Because Jesus had paid that price for us. We are his. We belong to him. And that's why as we meditate and as we go into this last decade, let us be in a position to answer that call. To follow me, what the Lord is asking. To be able to answer that and to live that in our day-to-day -day lives. Amen. All Amen. together. Eternal Father, we offer, you, offer you, the you the body and blood, blood the soul and the divinity of your dear and dear beloved Son, our Lord, our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of those who are the whole world. Anyone? For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, have mercy on us and the whole world. The whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, Abba Father, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, Abba Father, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of Jesus' sorrowful passion. Abba Father, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Mighty One, Holy Mortal One, one. Have, have mercy on us and on, on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Mortal One, Have mercy on us and on the whole, whole world. world. Holy God, Holy God, Holy Mighty One, one. Holy Mortal One. one. Holy Holy one. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. world. Eternal okay, God, closing prayer together. Eternal God, Eternal in whom mercy, mercy is endless, is endless, endless and the treasury of compassion is inexhaustible. Look kindly upon us and increase your mercy. mercy in us. That in, in difficult moments we might not, not despair. No, become, no, become despondent, but, but with great confidence, submit ourselves to your will, 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 which is love and mercy. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you. Now we are going to just into our benediction. You are the Lord of our world, and nothing can compare, nothing can take your place. And so, Lord Jesus, we just ask, even at this moment, that you send your spirit upon us, that you bless us, that you guide us. So we continue to worship you. We continue to place you as the Lord of our lives. We ask you to bless us, to bless those around us. And in as a result as, and in overflow, let us also be a blessing to the world around us. Lord Jesus, we just pray for your blessing. Open our hearts to receive this blessing. So we'll pray the divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be Jesus. Blessed be Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most precious blood. Most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most precious blood.
Blessed be the Holy Spirit. Be the great mother of God. Blessed be her holy and blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of the Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most God in his angels and in his angels and in his saints. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are risen Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, today has been amazing prayer meeting. Uh, you know, power of God listening to the word of God, adoring God every moment is a command of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And we know that we are growing in all these seeds that are being sown, are in, sown in the spirit. Amen. And they bear fruit. Amen. Yes, sister. Amen. They bear fruit. So Jesus, um, just as today, we know Luke 6, 43, for no good tree bears bad fruit mm -hmm. and nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit now we are also uh, you know called to bear fruit john 15 and to glorify god the father through jesus and by listening to this word romans chapter 10 verse 17 says Faith comes by hearing the word of Christ, the word of God that is proclaimed from Logos to Rema, from the written word of God to the alive and active word of God, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord, of course. So Amen. thanks. Amen. Thank you once again. So you are not going empty. The Lord has actually blessed each one of us mightily. Thank you, God. Again, thank you thank for everything thank you, thank you jesus yes i see myself as matthew a little bit of matthew or more of a matthew in me personalizing or call it lexio divina and i am obviously in need of jesus as brother don said all of us and how wonderful we have this help so we as we, need Jesus. <laughs> yes. Praise you, Jesus. Praise yes. You, Jesus. Uh, today, definitely, as Brother Don mentioned, I am going to do an examination of conscience. So one of the Psalm 15, if you want to, or deeper examination of conscience. I'm going to do that tonight. It's a wonderful way of inviting the Lord into our hearts and to glorify God. So we will see you next week. But I have a, we this this one sister Olivia. I saw. Oh no, I think Olivia has probably left. Olive. Olive. Sister Olive. Olive. Yes, yeah. sister Olive. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to say quick hello to her because, uh, uh, but she probably has left. Maybe next week. Yeah, yeah, she's from my parish, brother. I will do that on your part. Oh, thank oh, you, wow. brother Don. Yes, mm -hmm. that would be excellent. Yes, 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 and. Once again, thanks all. Thank we will you see all. you next week. Uh, next week is Sister Agnes. Yeah. So we also re remember her. Uh, sh uh, her daughter Monisha has. Uh, she left for you. She is actually on the flight. As um, so, please do pray for her. We also want to pray for all the prayer requests. Pray for one another. Um, next week. Next week. Uh, yeah, we will have. And uh, yes, so see you all next week. Do bring your friends and families. The more yes. we spread this word of God and build one another in the body of Christ, that's what God is going to ask us. If we go to heaven, God is going to ask us, why is your neighbor in hell? Yes. So we won't be able to answer our Lord Jesus 
This is our best time to reach out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank you.